Hello and welcome to the Fall 2020 Seasonal Outlook for South Central Texas. My name is Keith White and I recently took over earlier this summer as the Climate Services Focal Point here at National Weather Service Austin San Antonio. Today is Thursday, October 8th, 2020. A quick outline of what I'd like to talk about today. Uh, La Nina conditions are forecast through the fall and winter. This typically leads to warmer and drier than normal conditions for our area. Uh, we've seen some recent drought improvements over the last month for areas east and north. Uh, drought does remain over our western areas and is likely to worsen and expand through this La Nina winter. Fire weather could become a concern later this fall once again due to uh, periods of hot and dry weather as well. Uh, and we'll start receiving some additional cold fronts that will bring in gusty winds and low humidity from time to time. And uh, an active hurricane season, still ongoing, uh, seems to have spared South Central Texas from significant impacts, although Tropical Storm Beta did bring three to five plus inches of rain to our uh, coastal counties of Lavaca, DeWitt, and Fayette. So a quick look back at summer here, uh, broken down in the table by August as well as the full summer for our four climate sites of Austin Mabry, Austin Bergstrom, San Antonio, and Del Rio. Uh, it was a warmer and drier than normal summer at all locations. Uh, in fact, it was the warmest summer on record at Del Rio and the second warmest August. In general, a few to maybe even uh, five degrees above average through the summer at some locations uh, and uh, relatively dry uh, running somewhere close to 50% of normal at some of our sites and even drier than that uh, out at Del Rio this summer. And so the maps here on the right show the uh, spatially averaged information there uh, but generally across our entire area warmer and drier than normal uh, conditions were seen through the summer. Now we kind of turned that around in September for most locations, uh, wetter and cooler than normal uh, for the most part. The exception unfortunately is across locations west of San Antonio that were already experiencing drought. And uh, in those areas they were still unfortunately warmer and drier than normal in September. Uh, but generally across the rest of the area, very wet, especially near Austin. Uh, Bergstrom was two and a half times their, their normal precipitation for the month of September. Um, and then across the southern Edwards Plateau as well, uh, saw some pretty wet conditions in September and uh, down south of San Antonio. Uh, looking at percent of normal rainfall over the 30, 60, 90, and 180 day periods, uh, you can see recently where a lot of that rainfall fell here in the southern Edwards Plateau, uh, the hill country to the west and northwest of Austin, and then to the south and southeast of San Antonio. Uh, as we go over longer time scales, you can see those rainfall surpluses sort of uh, disappear in most locations. And over the past half year, uh, mainly just this area near and south of Austin, and then south and southeast of San Antonio, still seeing surpluses. Uh, with a few locations here, to the west of San Antonio seeing uh, deficits you know of less than half of their normal rainfall uh, over the course of the last half year. Uh, a quick look at uh, statistical expectations as we head into the fall and these are somewhat old charts uh, the severe weather reports only through 2013 but uh, the general gist is that uh, severe weather is not super common here in the fall However, we do sort of have a secondary rainfall maxima, and you can see that here in our monthly rainfall data. Uh, October, for, for most of our areas, is sort of the second or third wettest month normally. Now, of course, we're bucking that trend this year. We have yet to see any rain uh, thus far in October, and it looks pretty likely that we'll remain dry over most of our area much of this month. Uh, we do typically begin experiencing pleasant temperatures by late October. Now these lines, uh, the thin lines you can see, show our average maximum, average, and minimum temperatures uh, uh, daily. And so we do finally start to see uh, average temperatures drop below 80 degrees later this month across uh, all three of our, our um, main climate cities. A quick look at the short-term outlook. This is the CPC to 14 day outlook for October 15th through 21st. A 40 to 50% chance of continuing uh, below normal rainfall and then uh, equal chances of above and below normal temperatures. Uh, maybe as you head closer to the coast, a slight chance of below normal temperatures there for the uh, mid to late October period. 
Uh, we do have a pretty strong signal for La Nina. An advisory was issued on September 10th. Uh, these graphs that I'm showing are recreated on a monthly basis. So uh, should be out uh, the new products in a couple of days, but the general gist uh, of these older graphs is still valid. And that is that we're expecting La Nina conditions to continue through the fall into the early winter before uh, the cold sea surface temperature anomalies in the equatorial eastern Pacific uh, are expected to uh, start to subside as we head into uh, late winter and early spring. Uh, this map shows the expected teleconnections for La Nina, and you can see here over Texas, typically drier and warmer than normal uh, during La Nina years. Um, this is not a sure bet, but it is quite likely, and I'll show you that here on this next slide. Now, this is broken down by climate zones. So unfortunately, our area doesn't fit neatly into any of these, but I've highlighted the three that do cover the majority of our coverage area, and that's West Central Texas, Upper South Texas, and Lower South Texas. So uh, what you're looking at here in these pie charts is um, the tercile values are calculated, and those are shown in those legends for each zone at the bottom. And so if you look at all years, uh, each of those pie chart areas would be equal. But we, we've broken it out here by La Nina years uh, from the 30s through the late 90s. And what this shows is on the left, the raw data, and then on the right, the trend extrapolated data, which is uh, basically just taking out the long-term climate change trend to see if there's any differences. All still show that uh, in general, uh, more likely warmer than normal conditions are expected across these zones, and especially for the lower south Texas zone that, in, that covers our southwestern areas. Um, and then on the right, uh, the same information for precipitation. Uh, we can say with, with relative certainty that uh, you know, there's at least a 60% chance of a drier than normal uh, fall here for the October through December period. Um, it can't completely rule out that some locations would still see uh, wetter and cooler than normal conditions. But again, looking very likely that uh, for most of our area, uh, warmer and drier through the fall. And so uh, some of our models have already picked up on that. This is the climate forecast um, uh, seasonal anomaly for the October through December period. Uh, so I've got a box there highlighting our area, and we're looking at, in general, uh, an average one to two degrees Celsius temperature anomaly through December. That translates to about 1.8 to 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and although I don't show it here, this trend will continue uh, into early 2021 and may even worsen uh, into the two to three degrees Celsius range close to the Rio Grande. Uh, the same model precipitation anomalies these are in uh, millimeters per day uh, looking at over most of our area a 0.6 to 0.8 millimeter per day anomaly maybe a little less there closer to the rio grande uh, to put this in context our average daily precipitation here in mid-october is about 3.8 millimeters per day for our i-35 corridor areas and lower uh, out at Del Rio, and then by the end of December, that comes down to about two millimeters per day uh, at Austin, San Antonio, uh, and then even lower than that at Del Rio. So as a rough estimate back of the envelope calculation, uh, this model would suggest a 20 to 30 percent reduction uh, on average in fall precipitation. Uh, now, CPC um, has, uh, of course, used a lot of other models than just the CFS in their forecast. This is what they put out at the end of September for the rest of October. Generally equal chances uh, in terms of above or below normal temperatures uh, for most of our area, maybe uh, better chances for warmer than normal through the month of October out west near the Rio Grande. And then uh, same for drier uh, conditions. Most of our area expected to be drier than normal with a higher signal there, especially as you get into the Southern Edwards Plateau. And then uh, the three month outlook, this was made now uh, three weeks ago or so, but in general still expected to be uh, relatively valid for the October through December period. Uh, 50 to 60% chance of uh, above normal temperatures and 40 to 60% chance of below normal precipitation through the end of December. Uh, in terms of drought, we'll start here on the right. Uh, the, uh, the top box there shows the drought monitor back 
on September 1st, 93% of our area was uh, abnormally dry or worse, with 7% of the area under extreme drought. And uh, up through last week, we saw uh, pretty dramatic improvement before um, dry weather brought us back uh, into some more drought, unfortunately. But looking at current conditions as of this morning, 55% uh, of our service area there is abnormally dry, with only 3% in extreme drought. Uh, but looking at, uh, on the right, the seasonal drought outlook through the end of December, expecting drought conditions uh, to continue to expand once again and likely worsen over the course of the next couple of months. Uh, what does this mean in terms of fire weather? Well, here's a look at uh, yesterday morning's Keech Byram drought index. Uh, you can see the areas where it's been dry, especially over the long term to the west of San Antonio, uh, do show higher values. Um, uh, and so uh, what that means is, you know, a moisture deficiency in those areas. And then there are some uh, blotches of blues in there where uh, there's been a lot more moisture lately, a lot more rainfall. Uh, and those areas, uh, you know, should um, continue to see favorable conditions for, you know, a lack of, of fire weather. Um, but with no rain in the past uh, week or two and little in the forecast, continued above normal temperatures expected, these values will continue to rise in the short term. Uh, now looking at energy release components, uh, this is broken up uh, as well, uh, unfortunately, over our area. But in general, that black line there for this year shows above uh, average conditions, near to above average conditions for energy release component. Pretty similar to values last year for the Rio Grande Plains. Uh, these would be expected to likely uh, hover around where they're at now, maybe rise a little bit over the next week or two. Um, now, I haven't shown it here, but the National Interagency Fire Center outlook indicates that especially as we head into the late fall, early winter, by December, our northern zones will likely see above normal fire weather potential. Uh, and like I said in the introduction, with fall upon us, continued uh, periods of cold fronts bringing gusty winds and low humidity will continue to uh, add to these energy release components if we uh, don't see significant rainfall over portions of our area. And now lastly, briefly, I'd like to talk about hurricanes. Now, as I'm recording this, Hurricane Delta continues to spin over the Gulf of Mexico and will likely impact locations very near uh, where Hurricane Laura just hit uh, just last month. Here in Texas, we had some near misses. Hurricane Hannah uh, hit deep south Texas a couple of months ago. And of course, Tropical Storm Beta did uh, impact our coastal plains areas with uh, some pretty beneficial rainfall just a few weeks ago. Uh, La Nina definitely contributed to the above uh, average uh, Atlantic Basin storms this year. Of course, we're already in the Greek alphabet and there's still some time to go. For Texas itself, uh, you can see on the graph here, once we get into October, we really drop off in terms of uh, seeing landfalling systems. And so at this point, we're not really expecting any additional impacts to South Central Texas, although far Southeastern Texas will see some impacts here uh, tomorrow and over the weekend from uh, Hurricane Delta. And lastly, a quick summary, uh, heavy rain, flash flooding, river flooding, not expecting any uh, real impacts, um, expecting be below to well below normal overall. Uh, conditions due to the antecedent drought, uh, as well as the likelihood of continued drier and warmer than normal conditions this fall. Although that said, all it really takes is one heavy rainfall event to cause problems. So it, it's always important not to let our guards down, to continue to, continue to keep an eye uh, on the forecast uh, when there are potential uh, heavy rainfall events. In terms of fire weather, near to above normal impacts from uh, wildland fires are possible this fall, especially later on into December, uh, due to the antecedent drought conditions and the expectation that these will worsen. And uh, tropical weather, expecting near to slightly below normal impacts, uh, uh, especially if, you know now that we're into October. Uh, it, it is a busy hurricane season. There will still likely be a few more systems to watch over the next month or so. Uh, but it's very rare to have uh, hurricanes impact locations this far to the west into Texas at this point. So that ends my presentation today. I'll leave this uh, information up, uh, our public line there, my email address if you'd like to ask any questions about this presentation or just in general. 
And of course, uh, you can find uh, great, some great weather information on our website, weather.gov slash Austin or slash San Antonio. Thank you very much.